Hello Aquarians, welcome back and thank you so much for joining me for your general love reading for the month of February and just in time for Valentine's Day for those of you who are celebrating. So of course this reading is intended to resonate with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. However, it cannot possibly be everyone's love story. So if it does resonate with you, comment below and if not, as always, check your other placements and my channel for messages you need to hear. And as always, time, energy, gender are all fluid. So reverse roles, however they apply to your story. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and tap the notification bell so you can catch future readings. So Aquarius, thank you so much for all of your love and support. Thank you to the subscribers who have stuck it out with me um, through the dry spell these last couple of months. I know that I skipped Zodiac readings in Capricorn season. And I was almost um, ready to skip Aquarius season, seeing as we only have about a week left. But I did not want to leave you guys out like I did Capricorn. And to make it up to you both, I will be doing an intimate extended bonus reading for your sign and Capricorn only this month. So um, my way of trying to make up for the fact that I made you wait almost your entire birthday season for your video. But anyways, hopefully you guys Guys are enjoying the other content that I've been putting out although it's been kind of scarce and I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things and start getting zodiac readings uploaded more um, consistently once again so uh, again thanks for your support guys thank you for those of you who have been purchasing private readings and items from my shop throughout the holidays and uh, if you're new to the channel we of course would love to have you as a part of the group the community so feel free to subscribe and check the description box below that way you can also join us on social media connect with me in the various ways and if you feel as if these general readings are resonating with you then as always you can book a private reading with me. I'm running some really great specials this month for Valentine's Day savings, um, including uh, savings on your love readings, soul connection readings. Um, I'm doing a special card pull for just messages from your person. And you can also receive 20% off of my entire collection of cards on makeplaincards.com. So even if you don't have a boo this holiday season and you're just looking to treat yourself, then this would be a great opportunity for you to add to your deck collection or see what's coming in love. So again, feel free to take advantage of those promotions, um, which can be found down in the description box on my community tab and all of my social media platforms. So getting right into it, you guys. I'm really excited about this love reading. As a lot of you already know, love readings are my favorite. So this reading is intended to resonate with you about your person uh, or your person of interest. However, cross watchers are always welcome. As always, just remember though, it's important not to force the storyline to fit with your situation. If it is not for you, then hopefully this intimate extended bonus reading will be, or I'll just catch you on the flippity flip like I like to say, okay? Okay, just don't force it to fit. So take what resonates, leave the rest behind, and let's see what the romance angels have in store for you. So what do we have for the sign of Aquarius for the season of Aquarius and for Valentine's Day? So whatever uh, you're specifically watching for. Okay, so we're starting with a little bit of a story here, Aquarius. So first of all, we have forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. We also have pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. And engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So of course, there are going to be multiple different combinations of how these cards will apply to each viewer. But some of the things I'm picking up on here is... Um, Again, this is is intended to resonate with your person. So if this message is about you, again, this is just the general message of what spirit wants you to know regarding this connection. So there's a couple things. Either you are interested in someone who is already engaged, okay, or in a previously committed connection, and you're waiting for this person. Um, so this could be sort of a separation 
situation, okay, where maybe you have been drawn to this person and you know that that this person is worth the wait, but in order for the two of you to ascend into a higher level of commitment, there could be some karmic cycles that need to be completed. So again, whether or not this is a third party situation, it's not going to be that way for everyone, but I kind of see this as a stepping stone to getting to where you want to go. So if engagement or commitment or coming into a relationship or coming into union with your person is what you are after, this person could be having some family issues, like I said, some karmic cycles that need to be closed out. When I see forgiving and learning and talking about healing the past, uh, this could be healing trauma from childhood uh, as early as or trauma from previous relationships, partnerships, family dynamics, okay? So as you and this person perhaps forgive and learn and grow and experience these lessons in life, um, maybe you're both kind of being guided right now. So I know it says pay attention to the red flags, but sometimes I see this card as as kind of like spirit waving in your face and saying, hey, we're guiding you, we're showing you the signs. So if you're the type of person who is like me, who's like, show me a sign, and then you get a sign and you're like, I'd like a sign of your sign, please, then this could also be that energy as well. Spirit trying to flag you down and show you and point you on the path of of being patient for this person, okay? Reminding you that divine timing is always at play, not just in your love life, but in life in general. And so um, regardless of what the specific situation here, I know I'm kind of going a little bit on a tangent and hopefully what I'm saying is resonating with, with you, the watcher, but uh, I feel like I said it's kind of an ascension in the order of cards here in order to get to this point of of higher commitment and and being with the person that you want to be with there is going to be some sort of a weight okay so if you've been being very patient i feel almost as if spirit is encouraging you here um to to trust that everything you've been patient for is going to unfold and bring you to that pinnacle of where you can finally be in a committed connection with this person okay and that's not for all of you but um again some of you could be having some extra Journal situations where uh, maybe you've ignored some red flags or you've made excuses for some red flags in in spirit of the journey okay so if that's resonating with some of you hopefully you know what I'm trying to say here um, sometimes when we really really want to be with someone or when we feel as if we're being pointed in someone's direction um, sometimes it's not always because we're supposed to be with that person right sometimes spirit is sending us signs and saying hey you've gone through this lesson before um, and that could also be where this situation splits off okay this could be like a dual story here some of this energy could be for you, the watcher. Some of it could be about your person. For some of you, you could be dealing with someone, okay, a third party in your own life and learning and working through those issues. And your person could also be dealing with a mirrored situation. So again, whatever it is for you specifically, um, you'll have to let me know in the comments or in the DMs if you feel um, like you don't want to put your business out there. I completely understand that. So bottom of the deck, we have new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. So Aquarius. For some of you, you're dealing with a situation that involves you wrapping up a karmic cycle with someone who you've, you have family with or someone who's in your family is what I'm hearing, okay? So if you are wrapping up some sort of a karmic cycle and you're starting to finally see these red flags, okay, maybe like I said, you've, you've made excuses for this person in the past, um... Spirit could also be telling you that you had to go through this in order for you to meet someone new, okay? Someone who is going to show up for you and stir your romantic feelings, bring back the life uh, within you, okay? Because sometimes you can feel very zapped from that romance when you're dealing with family issues, when you're dealing with karmic cycles, okay? Um, so maybe Spirit is telling you that 
if you're that person who feels like you've been going through a lot of trials right now or you're you're just starting to see the light in a sense, they're telling you to have faith that this new love is going to show up when the time is right and they will be ready for that commitment. They will want to ascend with you into that um, that higher level of relationship, okay? So I know that was a lot, um, but like I said, this is your birthday season, so just kind of expect this reading to be a little bit long. Um, and there really is no rhyme or reason to this reading either. I've just got some decks out here. We're going to pull and see what spirit wants you to know regarding the energy of this person. So we're going to move straight into the lover's path. And I'm actually going to put this new love card up here. Um, because obviously, oh my gosh. And Aquarius, one more thing. Give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. This could also be a dual thing as well. Maybe you've spent a long time giving this person chances. Um, that when this new love comes along, you could potentially block yourself off from this person based on the past. So spirit could be telling you, you know, give this new person a chance. Um and if some of you are saying, no, this is actually me waiting on someone that I want to be with that's actually in their own karmic situation, uh, then that could also be spirit encouraging you and telling you, like, give this person a chance to heal their family issues, to do what they need to do, um, and this person will come to you when they're ready, right? So, and let's get into the lover's path before I start pulling every single card from the romance angels. <laughs> So I've actually split this deck up um, in between the Major Arcana and the Minor Arcana because the Lover's Path Tarot is um, 22 stories of famous loves in the past, okay? So very famous love stories, and I'm just going to warn you right away, a lot of these stories are quite tragic, okay? But it does spark um, intellectual conversations and um, things that relate to our current world. So let's see what the overall theme is for you and this person's connection and what spirit wants you to know from the major arcana themes. Spirit almost slapped you in the face with the entire major arcana deck Aquarius. So <clears throat> hopefully you got some sort of uh, some sort of a face blocker or some shit. So when the cards fly out at the camera, you don't get you don't get paper cuts. So anyways, we have Dido and Aeneas, okay? I'm not really 100% sure of the story here, so I'm going to read from the book. But as you can see, I mean, just from the image here intuitively, I mean, look at her. I kind of I have a feeling this is the story someone someone is in love with someone else and basically they they trigger warning but they commit suicide she throws herself on the pyre um so let's read from the book but you can see she's she's forlorn she's depressed she's sad um the ship is taking off without her okay and she's alone and <clears throat> sometimes you know when you're in that energy of being alone feeling depressed um, the tower is on fire and this is the, uh, the card of oppression. Okay. Which is, I believe the tower. So anyways, let's read from the book so that I can tell you what the story is actually about instead of making a bunch of guesses. So the traditional card is the tower and the keywords here are depression, difficulties, and release. So Queen Dido of Carthage was walking upon the beach when she found Aeneas and his soldiers. She was charmed by the handsome stranger and soon fell in love. Aeneas and excuse me, <clears throat> Aeneas loved Dido in return, but he was a man with a cause larger than the love he could bear for any woman. So <clears throat> he claimed it was the God's will that he journeyed to found a new Troy in Italy. Distraught, Dido built a funeral pyre at the top of a tall tower and set fire to it. As Aeneas's ship cast off into the sea, Dido climbed the tower and lay down upon the pyre. So, kind of um, aggressive, right? But it's, 
I guess it's just simply saying like <laughs> these sort of these sort of obsessive connections where we feel like we can't be without someone else to the point of of taking your own life. I mean, that just sounds so over the top and unnecessary, but but again, like people, this happens. This is real. This is something that happens in real life all the time. People reach that point where they feel like they can no longer go on. And, and that is the level of desperation that, that Dido was feeling in that, um, in that moment, right? Having the love of her life sail off on some, some quest, some journey, and <clears throat> knowing that that he would never be able to actually return the love that she had for him, okay? It was it was destruction from there on out. The tower falls when we know that the foundation upon it is false, okay? So clearly in this specific scenario, poor Dido realized that there was no foundation between her and Aeneas. Therefore, she ended it all, right? Hopefully your situation isn't this extreme, Aquarius, but I feel like this is more of a metaphor, okay? We were just talking about how certain karmic cycles and things were needing to be wrapped up and and dealt with in order for you to see the light and, and trust that something better was out there for you, okay? So if you are the person who has hung on for dear life to a connection in hopes that it would not, you know crumble from underneath your feet, then I feel like spirit is simply saying no matter how hard you try to hold up that tower, no matter how hard you try to keep the tower from falling or keep your person from going off on another journey without you, the harder the tower is going to fall, okay? The greater destruction in the end. Um, and, and this is just the general theme of we have to stop forcing connections to fit, okay? So regardless of which party you are in this scenario, um, I'm seeing that there is someone who has perhaps really, really tried to fight for their connection, and what ended up happening is it, it fell to dust, okay? But again, this hopeful message of worth waiting for and engagement, new love, like, there's so much on the other side. The tower falls because the foundation sucked in the first place. It's like that song, the house doesn't fall when the bones are good, okay? Um, she probably sings it with much more of a country twang than I just said it, but <clears throat> the more you try to force things, the worse you'll be in the end, okay? If you're trying to force it, it's probably shit, right? That's what they say. So whoever you are, like I said, the tower has come in as your main theme. But the great thing about the tower is when everything falls to dust, that is your opportunity to create something that is stable, that is what you actually need, something that you can rely on and know for a fact that it's not just going to wither away in the wind, okay? So let's see if there's any other themes that pop out here from the Major Arcana. Any other major themes that we need to know for Aquarius, please? Yeah. So we have temptation, okay? So the devil. And, you know, I think it's funny how this card comes right before the tower. So we were just talking about karmic cycles, okay? Forcing things to fit, making things work. This is the obsessive um, energy that we mentioned. Being so obsessed with an idea or a concept that, you know, if it's not the exact way that you saw it, then it's just like throw the whole thing away. Um, but the devil pops up when, when we need to acknowledge those certain codependent um, relationships, when we need to acknowledge places where we've kept our own selves stuck and trapped in a connection for all the wrong reasons, okay? So temptation is the key word here, and the lovers are Paolo and Francesca. So let's look and see what their story is. 
So the key words here are inner turmoil and obsession, okay? Francesca de Polenta of Ravenna was married to Giovanni Malatesta to strengthen their family's political bonds. Let me pause right there. Whatever the reasons that you tried to make this connection work, um... I have a feeling that it was largely to do with the material things, okay, or how things looked on the surface. But if the devil is showing up, the question I have is, was the love ever actually genuine or was it conditional, okay? So they get married for political reasons, okay, joining the families, money, all that bullshit, but there was one problem. Francesca loved Giovanni's brother, the handsome Paolo. So here comes the third party situation, okay? Tempted by love, Francesca and Paolo's story could only end in sorrow. These true events inspired the poet Dante, who had a vision of Paolo tenderly embracing Francesca to protect her against the forces swirling about them in Hades. Dante retold their sad story in his Inferno, the first book of the Divine Comedy. So this speaks of being tempted by forces one cannot control and obsession in the form of envy, okay, sensual desires and the need to be controlling. So there was a power and control issue going on here. And I kind of feel like Aquarius, you could be Francesca, okay? Uh, you could have uh, fallen in love with someone else or not even an actual physical person, but you could have been in this connection knowing damn well that there was no love, okay? And maybe starting to be open to finding this new love. So maybe this new love is coming in because it's what you've manifested. Even if you didn't go out and fuck around on this person, Aquarius, I have a feeling that based on the whole idea of conformity within a relationship, basically carrying out a, a partnership for all the wrong reasons, I feel like Aquarius, if this is you, it's like you, you unloved this person more and more as time went on to the point where you finally started to see these red flags and awaken to the fact that first of all you deserve real true actual authentic love okay everyone in this world does and maybe you've just decided like hey my idea of higher levels of commitment my idea of being in love and sharing romantic feelings this ain't it what I'm dealing with now. Okay. So again, if this is you or, or this is like a cross watcher situation, someone has not only dealt with the energy of the tower, but they're understanding why it got to that point. Okay. They're seeing all of this, um, this attachment and this sort of controlling energy. And it's not, it's not the picture that you envisioned when you saw yourself, you know, being married, having a family and all the other things that you envision for your life. Okay. Maybe you don't actually want a family, but when you see yourself with that person, you're starting to unsee the person that you were previously with. Okay. So hopefully you're still following me, but we're going to move on to the minor arcana and talk more about what's going on in your person's situation. Okay. So when I say your person, um, this could split off and be a completely different part of the reading that might resonate in a different way. The person that we can be talking about could also just be you. All right. Um, and even the energy of what I was picking up before, if there was a previous person that you feel like you had to separate from, um, their energy might come up, but let's just see what comes out. What spirit wants us to know from the minor arcana, please for Aquarius. So we're starting with the five of arrows. Okay. So the five of swords. So I think we're kind of going back to a little bit of the backstory of what is going on or or maybe what caused this sort of energy to happen because the five of swords is, is petty arguments and one-upmanship. This is someone who is kind of argumentative for the sake of arguing. So I kind of feel like if you 
if we're talking about this person from the past who you feel like you're working through family issues with um, and who you're experiencing these tower moments of oppression, um, then it's because of this reason, okay? I have a feeling, Aquarius, that you're just kind of done with the fucking fighting, the arguing, the petty energy. Um, it's like a relationship is not some like competition. It's supposed to be a partnership. So I think that you spent quite a bit of time being confused. Maybe there was a lot of um, verbal and even emotional abuse that was going on. And I'm hearing the word underhanded. So, you know, maybe there were a lot of underhanded arguments and I'm like hearing very sarcastic tones and things like that. It's like as time went on, I feel like you both grew very bitter towards one another and this energy of dissonance between the two of you just became too much to bear, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put this here because I feel like this is central to what's going on and why this whole tower erupted in the first place. So, um, and I feel like this is Cupid and Psyche and this is kind of talking about the I think this is like that scene where she like accidentally burns him and he like flies away in rage and it's talking about like separation, right? Separating from confusion. So let's elaborate. What else do we need to know from the major? From the major? I really did just make a word. Major and minor. It's major, okay? So what else do we need to know from the minor arcana? <laughs> over here making up words <clears throat> anything else we need to know okay so first of all let's talk about this right here so you have the queen of wands okay fricka and we have the ace of wands ironic that they're both in the reverse though okay and we also have the six of arrows coming up in the reverse so to elaborate, I feel almost like Aquarius, whether this is you or the other person, um, <clears throat> there was an energy of manipulation definitely happening here because the queen of wands in the reverse is, is like the epitome of a karmic partner, someone who knows exactly what to do to get what they want. This could be someone who uses sex, okay, as a manipulation tactic, um, this could be someone who is kind of like a cheater or a player even, someone who is very ambitious but out to please themselves, okay? Um, and I'm hearing running around, okay? So if you were this person, Aquarius, and you decided that you were going to step out of the connection or if this was the other person they decided to step out of the connection, is because there was no passion, okay? This... Uh, Ace of Wands in the reverse to me kind of reminds me of like a wet match, okay? There's no sexual chemistry, no sensual energy between you and this person. It's like a false start. Um, and maybe this has been a cause of a lot of sexual frustration between you and this person. Um, and when I see the Ace of Arrows in the reverse, it's like there's no healing, there's no peace, okay? So you're I feel like you've been living in this energy of trying to remove yourself from this, but at the same time, it's like you don't want to just let it go. You want to fight for it, okay? And that's why we see that give your relationship a chance here. It's like you don't want to just throw it all away and um, and go to the extreme, but also if you've been living in this lackluster energy that makes you feel like you have to start manifesting on the side or manifesting someone new. Um, I kind of don't blame you. And I hate to say that, but if you're with someone who literally makes your pussy dry, okay. And I don't even know what other way to say that, but if you're with someone who, who dries you up like the Sahara, okay, there's no sexual energy, no sexual chemistry. Um, it would only make sense for you to begin ending that connection and putting the energy out into the universe of manifesting something that is going to get your rocks off, okay? So Queen of Wands is a manifesting machine. It's Sagittarius, Aries, Leo energy. Um, but again, in the reverse, very karmic energy, okay? So whoever this is, this is someone who is who does not want to wait around in a connection where there's no passion, um, where maybe you aren't even like intimate with, another, with one another anymore. 
and there's just no peace. Okay. There's no escape. There's no, um, there's no healing the connection. I feel like no matter what you've, what you've done, what you've tried, there's no safe passage to the other side. Okay. With this card in the upright, this would indicate that, um, there's an opportunity to maybe heal this connection, but for this specific scenario, I don't think so. Okay. I think you've tried. I think you've done your due diligence. Um, and again, maybe you've both tried. Okay. But there's some sort of an element here too of temptation. So because of how things are kind of falling apart in the connection, these temptations are coming to the surface. This could also be conversations of said infidelities, okay? Um, both parties could have ended up stepping out on the connection due to the fact that there really is no connection, um, especially if this is a marriage of convenience at this point um, or some sort of codependent situation where you feel like you can't just walk away. So let's see what else we have from the Minor Arcana. What other messages do we need to know for Aquarius, please, about this connection? I want to know what's coming. What is this new love about? Aquarius. And again, for some of you, your person that you're dealing with could have found someone as well. Okay. So this new love card could be about your person finally letting this all go and deciding that they want to commit to someone else. Okay. So again, everyone's story could be different. And speaking of story, it looks like we have another one. So I love how all the cards are coming out in reverse. Um, so first of all, we have the six of cups, which is a nostalgic, kind, sweet energy. But in the reverse, I feel like this is spirit saying that yes, this was some sort of a past life karmic debt that needed to be paid. And when you think about the past with this person, I don't really feel like all the memories were sweet and kind like this. I feel like there was a lot of emotional manipulation going on here. And when you think about all the time that you've spent with this person, um, I'm hearing like wondering what the connection meant. So for some of you, you're wondering like what it all meant for you to have to be with this person and go through all of this bullshit with them. And maybe you're looking back on the past and the memories of, of connecting with them and everything you've gone through. It's not an, a good nostalgia is what I'm feeling. I feel like this is looking back on the past and even feeling emotionally drained. Like you've put a lot of your time, energy and efforts into a connection where you feel like it's not really going anywhere and six of cups is also a card of reconciliation so coming up in the reverse this kind of just drives the point home about what I said earlier even though maybe you want there to be peace um, I don't really feel as if this is a situation that can be revived okay um, next we have the nine of cups and then the ten of cups both coming up in the reverse. So the nine of cups in the reverse for me is like someone wishing for something and getting everything they asked for. But then when they got what they asked for, they forgot to ask for the 10th cup metaphorically. Okay. So getting what you asked for, but, but realizing that that's not actually what you wanted in the end, not really being truly satisfied with yourself. Okay. This could also be someone overindulging. This could also represent someone, um, being an alcoholic. Okay. Someone drinking too much. Um, wasting is what I'm hearing. So it's like maybe, um, to kind of numb the pain of everything going on. This could be an overindulgence, uh, along with that devil energy, feeling tempted to do things that you know are not really good for your physical body, um, your mental health. So with the Ten of Cups in the reverse, I think it's all because you had this vision, right? You had this vision of a happy family and being being emotionally fulfilled and happy and, and reuniting with this person. But like I said, that reunion doesn't seem to be happening. And... I think there's a realization here that after all this time of hoping to to have this happiness with this person that it's actually not what you wanted. You you didn't actually want 
this person, okay? You wanted the Ten of Cups, but the Ten of Cups never was with this person, okay? Which is why I feel like you are the one, Aquarius, that is trying to call in this new love, this higher level of commitment, someone that you can have this Ten of Cups with, sexually on the same page with you, not feeling as if you have to fucking fight with someone or force someone into a commitment that's not real, okay? That's not true. It's not authentic, okay? So very interesting reading. Um, this was supposed to be a love reading, P.S. I know this has kind of been a little bit of a tough reading, but hopefully it resonates with someone out there. So let's see if we have any other messages from the Minor Arcana. Anything else we need to know about this current situation? Look at that. We have another story popping out here, except they're all coming up upright this time. So I kind of almost feel since everything has come up in the reverse, I almost feel like spirit wants us to know about what's to come. Okay. So keeping in mind, if you're willing to allow the towers to fall and be open to manifesting someone new, if that is you, then here we go. We have the six of wands. Okay, so again, this worth waiting for energy is popping up. All the hard work and, and the passion, the ideas, the energy that you want to manifest and, and have come into fruition, it's coming. Okay, this is success and public recognition. So Spirit's telling you, like, keep going after what makes you feel that passion and desire. If you're in a connection with someone that doesn't make you feel that, then it's time to get out. Okay, no more forcing things to work. No more trying to pretend like everything is just fine because it ain't. Okay, next we have the two of swords or the two of arrows. I feel as if there will be a crossroads coming up for you where you know that there's a choice that you have to make or a decision you need to make, a path you need to choose, a conversation you need to have that you just might not want to have. You might feel the need to hide from this or act as if it's not there, ignore it altogether. But spirit is telling you if you want to get to this victory, you're going to need to be honest and... um and not allow your anxiety or fear about the future stop you from making a decision that's going to be good for you, okay? So we mentioned that earlier. Because of all the BS that you've been through with this person, Aquarius, you might find yourself becoming more detached and cold to any opportunities that come your way. But Spirit's telling you, um, you might feel like going in into that um, indecisive mode or acting like, you know, it doesn't really affect you even or that you don't need to make this choice. But with the seven of wands coming up after that, I think spirit's telling you that you need to fight for what you believe in no matter what it is. The passion, the love, the connection, the ten of cups that you're looking for. If you don't stand up for yourself, if you don't make a stand and fight for what you want, then then what's the use, right? You have to allow yourself to progress from this six to the seven and be willing to fight for what is good for you, what makes you happy, what lights your match metaphorically, okay? So a very interesting message is coming through for you, Aquarius. Let's see what's on the bottom of the deck in the processed energy. I think it's funny that we just had this card come up in the reverse and it does kind of remind me of a tower, but it's the three of coins. It reminds me of, of this energy of Dido. Okay. She's walking away from this partnership. Okay. So how I see it, and we've said it multiple times, Aquarius, if you were in a committed connection before that was just completely demolished by the tower moments and you're starting anew, this could be a couple of things. This could be spirit telling you in order for you to build a solid foundation, you need to be willing to cut ties with that previous partnership because as you can see, this is a foreshadowing of the tower, okay? So not just to cut ties with the previous connection that wasn't working, but this could also be a caution or a warning saying, um, be careful of who you do collaborate with in the future when you start building your new tower, okay? The nice, tall, beautiful white one that isn't just going to blow away because of some storm, okay? Um, 
Now keep in mind to the uh, bottom of the deck energy. I usually associate that with the past. So this could just in general be the realization of the partnership that you've put your time and effort into or the collaboration that you thought was going to be built into this beautiful ivory tower. Um, it ain't it, right? I keep saying that. It ain't it. It's not working. Okay. And the more effort you try to put into it, the sadder and more, um, more detached and cold you become. And for someone who is so, um, so intelligent, so real, so authentic Aquarius, uh, you don't need to be hiding away in a connection where you feel like you're doing all of the work or where you're trying to hold everything together. And, and, and it's just, where's the mutual effort? Where is someone coming in to show you that they want to commit to you? I feel like the person that you've been with in the past, um, I, I just get the feeling that they weren't making the effort. They weren't showing up because it wouldn't have been such a struggle. Okay. Uh, if there weren't so many arguments and fights and petty energy and all that stuff we talked about. So be careful of who you collaborate with in the future. Um, but don't allow yourself to be closed off or become, um, cold to future opportunities based on the past. Okay. So let's go ahead and get some energy from the true love Oracle by Lilac and Lavender Moon and see what messages we have coming from this deck. This could be about your new love, okay? This could just be um, a message that you need to hear, a message from your person. So what do we have for Aquarius? This could also be what you're trying to call in. So keep that in mind as you do have soulmates here. Um, now, soulmates come in many shapes and forms. Um, I know the word karmic floats around a lot out there, but a karmic is simply a soulmate, okay? So this could be speaking on that energy um, of that past life connection, having a karmic debt or something that needs to be paid off, which is why you had to go through this tumultuous relationship in the first place. But I think this is also spirit telling you that Everyone also has a soulmate, someone who um, gets them, someone who makes them feel these things, this love, this romance, okay? So I think Spirit wants you to stay open to finding your soulmate and someone who really gets you and is on your level, okay? So we have a quote from 10 Things I Hate About You. So I hate it when you're not around and the fact that you didn't call, but mostly I hate the way I don't hate you. Not even close, not even a little bit, not even at all. So this could be a couple different things. I mean, you and this previous person could have had some sort of a soul tie that makes it very difficult to break away from. Okay. So this could be a spirit reminding you that this person doesn't actually hate you. And I don't think you hate this person either, but doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be with them. Okay. Um, this could also be simply saying that the person that is your soulmate, the right person is going to absolutely hate it when you're not around. Okay. They're going to hate um, leaving you. Okay. Uh, even when you go to work or do simple things, they're going to hate not being around you. They're going to miss you. They're going to want to spend their time with you. Um, and that's important. Okay. So we also have accidentally in love. So talking about that whole third party energy, going back to the beginning, if there is someone that you're interested in already, or that you've already had some sort of a relationship with outside of this previous connection, then I have a feeling you were not trying to actually fall in love with this person, okay? Um, and if this is your previous person who is connecting with someone else, this could be them telling you, like, they didn't purposefully go out and look for this other person they connected with. They maybe just fell for them accidentally in the midst of dealing with all of this drama, okay? So this could be your previous person also reaching out with a message to let you know, like, they don't want you to hate them because they fell in love with someone else, okay? This reading is kind of confusing, and I feel like there's a, a lot of different storylines here, so hopefully y'all are still with me. 
We have Guarded and Meant to Be. Y'all, I just watched this episode um, a couple days ago when Ross and Rachel get married in Vegas after drawing all over one another with Sharpies. Like, Ross and Rachel had a very unique relationship, right? And no matter the trials and tribulations that they went through, they um, everyone knew that they were meant to be, right? They're each other's lobsters, like Phoebe would say. But with this guarded energy popping up, this could be a warning from spirit, like I said earlier. When this person does come along that makes you feel that energy of meant to be, don't, oh, I just had mad deja vu Aquarius. Don't block that person off or, or be cold to this person or doubt this energy or doubt that you deserve it because this guarded energy could end up, um, it could end up making your journey longer. Okay. Um, if you are meant to be with someone, there's nothing you can really do to stop that from happening, but being guarded, um, and pushing it away could end up just being a very difficult time for you. I think spirit wants you to be open. Um, even though you've been through a lot. And when I see guarded, I think wounded warrior, you've been through a lot in this previous connection. And overall, the message I keep seeing is worth waiting for. Okay. Whatever you've been through with this previous person, spirits telling you that it's going to be worth it in the end. Okay. Especially when you finally meet that person. Um, and you just know that it was meant to be. And I have a feeling whenever this person comes into your life, if they haven't already, that that's uh, kind of a revelation that you're going to have. Like all this time you've spent in the wrong connection, um, trying to make it work and then meeting this person, it's going to feel so right so fast, which could cause you to put up those walls. So just use your discernment and be open to true authentic love. You can never go wrong that way. So Let's see what Spirit's advice is from the True Love Reading Cards. What is Spirit's advice? Ah, commitment. And that is exactly what we see here with the engagement card. I love that we have these two swans connecting under the full moon. And we are going to have that full moon in Leo next week, which is supposed to be very powerful. Um, a great time to release anything that's holding us back. Uh, this could even be Spirit kind of hinting that there might be an interaction with this person that you're meant to be with. Okay, so let's take a look at what the book has to say. So a healthy commitment is the unshakable bedrock of a loving, secure relationship. So going back to that whole five of arrows, okay, I see that as an insecure relationship, right? Constantly needing to win, constantly needing to be right, constantly needing to be validated. Spirit's telling you that a true connection, okay, is a secure relationship bedrock of love. Okay. It's unshakable. So I don't know for those of you who are still with me, I feel like, again, this was a very complicated reading. So whoever you are in the storyline, just remember the general main basic concepts of don't force it to fit. Okay. Um, you are deserving of this sort of a true committed partnership, but you're not going to be able to receive that partnership if you're busy trying to, like I said, hold all the pieces together and be the glue for everyone else. All right. Um, so hopefully this resonated with someone out there. I know it was kind of long, but like I said, it's your birthday season, so y'all deserve it. And after I'm done with these general love reading, um, Zodiac readings, I will put out your intimate extended bonus reading, which will of course be done with the Tarot of Sexual Magic and some other scandalous cards. So if that is the kind of content y'all are interested in, please keep in mind, you can always feel free to join my members only area. <clears throat> which is called the Spicy Subscriber Society. Sorry, all of a sudden I'm clearing my throat. This was a very difficult reading to get through, I'm not going to lie. 
So yes, absolutely hit me up if you'd like to book a private reading, if this was your story, if you'd like to go even further, um, I am here. You can book with me down below. Other than that, you guys, I hope you enjoy the last week of your birthday season. I hope you take care of yourselves out in them streets. I love you so much and I will talk to you soon. Bye.